Mm. This is amazing. This is the best mise fine dining mise dish I've ever tasted. Mm. So good, so good. This is barbuni, or maybe better known as red mallet, or as my mom likes to call it, barabulka. <laughs> this is a very traditional Greek, or as I know it, Cypriot mise staple dish. Typically, this small fish is served somewhere among the starters in the mise, just after the cold starters and just before the main fish. It is typically just simply pan fried and served with some dips and sauces. But traditional and typical, this is not what we do in this channel. The purpose and the mission of the channel is to gourmetize the traditional things. So what we are going to do today, or attempt to do today, <laughs> we are going to make a more modern, more refined and more fine dining version of this traditional Greek starter with some Greek flavors. So very, very quickly, before we start, let me share with you my vision for the dish. I already made like a small drawing of how I want the dish to look like. So first thing I want to do, I want to fillet the fish uh, so people don't need to break it down and take out of the bones. Uh, as a chef, one of the main things that you should think about is of your guests eating experience. So I thought that would be more convenient to eat. I want to smoke it in my DIY stovetop smoker, which you might have seen in my previous videos as well. And the whole presentation of the dish is going to be very monochromatic, very, very green. And you'll see what I mean if you watch until the end of the video. <laughs> and as a dip or a sauce for this uh, red mallet, we're going to use a very, very traditional terama salata. But of course, not in the traditional form, more molecular or foamy form. Okay, let's start. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to start up my uh, DIY smoker, which is basically my very, very heavy uh, Dutch oven. And I'm going to put these two tins inside filled with uh, smokable ingredients. <laughs> of course, it's going to be some wood chips. If I had smaller wood chips, it would be much, much better, but we work with what we have. A little bit of cinnamon sticks for some flavor, aromas, and my last secret ingredient. Let me just get it. <laughs> okay, let me know in the comments if you know what this is. So I'm just going to use a couple of dry leaves from this thin that you will let me know about. What is it? And now we're simply going to put it inside the Dutch oven, close it, and put it on fire. And while it's heating up, I'm going to take our uh, dish rack, <laughs> another DIY element. I'm going to cover it with foil and have it ready for our fillet dish. Now let's fillet the fish. I'm uh, no expert in fish filleting and you might see it. <laughs> So don't judge, I'll do the best I can. We would never. I've never done actually with such small fish before. Okay, first I want to take the head off. No! Now I want to make an incision here where the spine, I don't know if it's a spine. Look at that, not too bad. I'm impressed with my fish filleting skills. Mm -hmm. Now let's do the second part of the filet, which is a little bit more tricky, I think. Okay, so the second fillet is done, also not too bad. This, don't throw it away, you're gonna need it for the fish soup or fish cutlets, you can still use a little bit of um, uh, fish left here, but we're not going to use it for this video. So we have these two beautiful fillets. I don't know if I want to remove the skin. I do want to remove it at the later stage, I don't know if I want to remove it now because I'm not certain of my uh, skills. <laughs> I think I'm going to ruin it. Believe in yourself. So let me think about it. And I have also some uh, bones left. So I'm going to try to remove them with the, um, the tweezer. 
that's it. It's boneless. I'll call it filet or boneless. <laughs> Okay, I've decided. I'm going to uh, try to remove the skin from one filet to test it on one filet. I still have one more fish to go because if you don't believe in your own skills, who will? I believe in you. I'm gonna try it. <laughs> almost. I almost did it, but not quite. <laughs> I'm still gonna go with this just to remove the what I can remove. And the rest I will remove when it's cooked. Now I'm just going to transfer my beautiful fillets over here. Wash my hands and put it in the smoker. And put it right on top. This and close it. Meanwhile, I'm going to rasp a little bit of the lemon and dehydrate it. It's gonna be very, very quick because I'm using the microplane and microplane takes only the top surface of the lemon so it's gonna be it's gonna be ready when the fish is ready so like in, in 10 minutes now the traditional thermosalata is made with white or red fish roux with the addition of white bread surprisingly or potato puree well I haven't found any fish roux this week so this sucks and we have to work with what we have. And what we have, what I have, is the terra masalata. So I'm going to use this as the base for my deep sauce. Okay, I think the fish is done. I'm just going to switch it off and leave it like this for smoke a little bit longer while I'm doing the deep. Yeah, this sucks a lot that I have to use the pre-made terra masalata. But this is actually a good brand. But still, I would go for the fish roux anytime. So I'm going to use a little bit of ready-made termosalata. Add a little bit of Greek yogurt. Not very smooth, especially the termosalata part. So I'm going to process it for quite a bit longer and then uh, pass it through the sieve to make sure that it's as fine as possible. Now this is a little bit tough, so I'm going to add some fish oil. Now, this is about the consistency that I'm looking for. You might also need to add a little bit of um, fish stock or dashi, very, very, very condensed one, so you don't dilute the fish flavor to make it more liquidy. Now, I'm just going to quickly pass it through the strainer to make sure there is no like large bits, uh, bits left in it from the um, thermosalata itself, because I don't know what was mixed in it. And now I'm going to put it in my favorite siphon. I said no, something no. Perfect. In this case, charge it with only one NCO or whipped cream charger. And it should be ready. Should be. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> I think it's too much. Okay, I'm no smoke expert. I'm gonna try it and see how it tastes, if I like it. Oh, it actually looks very nice. Look at it. It's just dark outside because of the smoking, but inside perfectly white. Yeah, I think it's, it should be good. Let's taste this one. Oh, hot. Hmm. A little bit dry, a little bit, I cooked it a little bit too much, maybe like seven minutes instead of ten. But for the sake of this video, it's good. Let's continue. <laughs> Let's give one to Billy. <laughs> if you keep your distance. Here you are. Tell us what you think. Now I need to act fast while it's still hot. Let's try not to break it, preferably. <laughs> yeah, this one was with the skin off, so it broke. 
wasn't a good idea. Mm, so lemony. This is the dry uh, lemon rasp, lemon zest. The flavor is amazing. What I want to do, I want to make powder out of it, although it looks beautiful like this, but it doesn't quite suit my uh, vision. So I'm going to powder it very quickly. Now, something like this. And I'm going to mix it with my already dehydrated dill powder. I just had it from before from testing other recipes, but it's very easy to do. It's the same thing. Basically, you take a bunch of dill, you put it on a tray and you dehydrate it for like 10 minutes and then you powder it and voila, dill, dill powder. <laughs> and I want to mix it together. Close and you mix and that's it and it's mixed. Very easy. Ta -da. Can't quite see it. Well, you, you can see it actually a little bit, but you can smell the flavor. The, smell, the flavor is there. Here, on a flat plate, something like this. And then we're going to dip our filet very quickly into this. The, um, the side where the skin is. I actually already tried the skin, it's not that bad. You can't even taste it, so I'm not going to remove it. I'm going to put it with the skin on. So, like this. And hopefully, it will stick and it will look nice. I don't want to break it. <laughs> the pain. <laughs> It's nice, but it, it's broken a little bit. Let me try another one. I mean, that's it. That's uh, how I wanted it. More rounded. Okay, the fish is ready. The mise en place is ready. We have our microgreens. We have our terra masalata foam. Now let's start plating quickly, quickly, quickly while it's still warm. One more time. <laughs> uh, maybe I can fix it, just one second. Just gonna spread it like this. Yeah, I think it's fine. <laughs> no waste of ingredients. Now you might ask, am I a chef or am I a florist? It's a very tricky question at this point. <laughs> I'm an artist, <laughs> a culinary artist. This is how I see it. <laughs> we eat with our eyes first, so it's very important for your food to look pretty. So you actually want to see it, uh, to eat it, sorry. The last one and that's it. Just the last little. So pretty. I love it. Okay, and from the other side as well. The same thing. Quickly, quickly. Let's plant some cilantro. So cilantro microgreens, by the way. And these are bok choy. And this one is sakura, I believe. Yeah, this is sakura. I love the color. It gives more depth to all this greenery. It will give a little bit of sparkle. Just a little bit of fish oil. Make them look a little bit fresher. And also more fishy. Mediterranean beauty. So green. Even never tell it's a fish, but it's a fish. 
too much sauce, maybe. But then again, it's never too much sauce. Delicious, so fishy, smooth like butter, <laughs> thermosalata, and these smoky flavors, and of course, the greenery. Usually the um, uh, fish dishes, the starters, they're served without any greenery, and I'm always, always missing it. And these fresh micro, micro herbs, they just, just perfect. 